In this video, I'll give you seven quick tips to improve your auto guiding so you can take long exposures. For astrophotography, auto guiding is a must for long exposures. And without it, you can probably only do maybe up to a minute, even with one, some of the better mounts. But with guiding, you can do many minutes, and I've done 20 minutes with no issues at all. Tip number one, reduce flexure. All right, now flexure, yeah, what I'm talking about with flexure is I'm talking about how the guide scope can move independently of your telescope, or in this case, my lens. Now, if it does, this can cause a lot of issues because the guide scope will be trying to correct on what it sees and it's not in it's not paired to what the telescope sees and so this means that it will make unnecessary corrections and throw your final imaging train off now here is uh, the actually the fourth version i have of trying to get the guide scope connected to my my camera lens now originally i had uh, made a little clamp that went around this part right here and that worked perfectly and I was able to get 20 minute subs with no star trails whatsoever. The reason I don't want it there is because there's actually uh, an electronic switch there for the vibration reduction and then it prevented me from rotating the lens and it caused a bunch of problems. And so I actually tried several different methods in order to get the guide scope uh, so that it wasn't mounted here and still wouldn't flex. And so this one was okay, but as you can see, if you move it a little bit, so the camera is not moving, all right? So when you have the ability of the mount for the guide scope to move independently of the camera, you've got a problem. And so I had tried it on both sides. I had tried thicker uh, supports and tried to make it as stiff as possible. And so the final solution is what I did here. Now what I've done here is that I have actually created a bracket and mounted it directly to the imaging camera itself. And so now, uh, because it is attached, if the guide scope moves, so does the imaging train. And this one little change right here has allowed me to keep it off of the uh, lens where there really is no mount for it and to keep it attached to the imaging train. And so I think this is the most important uh, consideration that you can do is to keep your guide scope in sync directly with your camera. Tip number two, reduce cable drag. Now, another issue that you might have is going to be with cable drag. And so uh, before I had this uh, ASIR mounted up high, I actually just put it down below on the tray. And what that did is that had um, at least four cables coming up uh, from the bottom. There was one for the filter wheel and the guide camera and the main camera and also for the power. And so what I really didn't have too many problems with it. But if you, when you're slewing and you're not paying attention because maybe you're inside or something and it grabs on some hook down at the bottom, well, maybe it can pull on one or the other, maybe that's independently, and this can cause all kinds of guiding issues. So what I've done here is that I've made a little mount for my ASI Air and put it off to the side. And then I'm wrapping all of these um, uh, cables up here good and tight. And then down at the bottom, if you can see this, I've got some tape right there. And so this tape, what this is, is it has all of the cables wrapped together and they are now independent. So if you go like this, you're, you're not uh, directly uh, affecting these that go into your imaging train. They are ma mounted with a strain relief down here on the frame itself. Tip number three, ensure good focus. Now the other night I had an issue where I was uh, losing the star and whatnot and it turned out that I just simply did not have good focus. And so I recommend getting this pretty good with your guide cameras so that you can 
uh, the, the software can clearly see what star it is. And it may seem simple and maybe you don't think it's a big deal, but I have found that this does make a difference. Tip number four, reduce dew on your camera. So now dew is an issue both with your imaging train and your guide camera. And in a previous video I was explaining that this particular guide camera doesn't even come with a dew shield. So what I have done is I just got a piece of paper and then I just taped it on and then made a temporary dew shield. And so what that will do is that will just reduce the onset of dew. And of course the final solution is to get a dew heater. So I just, those are two accessories that I have not done yet. And so that, what that is, does is that limits my time that I can image in, in the humid environment. So, but if you have dew on there, then there's going to be less contrast and eventually it'll get so much that you have actual droplets and then you're done. So dew is a issue. Tip number five, good polar alignment. A good polar alignment will definitely improve your auto guiding, but it's not a magic bullet because of other issues such as backlash and errors in your uh, mount and whatnot. So I have found that if I can get the polar alignment within five minutes, then the uh, corrections can be easily handled with the guide scope. But do spend some time to get decent polar alignment to improve your guiding. Tip number six, avoid bumps. Now this may seem obvious, but uh, you need to avoid even touching your camera or whatnot during your imaging session. And if you even touch it, then you're going to run into all kinds of trouble. So after you've obtained Socus and touched it for the last time, wait until you have a low RMS reading before you do your imaging train and then do not touch it again. Tip number seven, redo your calibration data. If everything is fine and you're auto guiding well, then just keep your calibration data the way it is. However, if something happens and something changes, you may need to redo this data, and this data is critical to, in order to have good guiding. All right, now let's take a look at some results. So in this image here, I have taken a stack of 20-minute subframes, and as you can see, the stars are pretty round. I've got good detail and I have uh, acceptable results. Conversely, having any issues with your guiding can cause a lot of problems such as star trails and blurry images. So just to summarize, the auto guiding really depends on the weakest link in the chain and I think if you follow these seven tips you would greatly improve your auto guiding and your resulting image in the end. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful and I'll see you next time.